Hi guys, good morning. I wanted to show you what I'm currently reading. Almost six months ago now, I got a Kindle for my birthday and I have been loving it. Um, I definitely got a lot more use out of it last year, I think, um, just because I was really good about reading. I haven't been as good about reading this year, but I still think that the Kindle was definitely worth the purchase. I I love reading, but I hate holding on to books. I think it's because I've moved often in the last few years. In the last four years, I've probably moved like 10 times. Um, and it's just moving myself, but it's a lot. And I just, I don't like holding on to books for that reason. Um, just because they're difficult to move and they also take up a lot of space. I've lived in a lot of really small areas and books just, they take up a lot of space and you don't use them often. Like you might use one and you use one consistently but then you have like a huge collection and it just sits there. That's just my personal opinion. I think paperback copies are great. I love reading paperback copies. Um, I just don't love the space they take up and that's just a me thing. So that's why I got a Kindle um, because I just wanted to have like all of the books at my fingertips um, in one teeny tiny thing. Also, the great thing about the Kindle is it's super like portable. Like I can just stick it in my fanny pack and literally take it anywhere with me and I have. Um, and I love that about it. Since I got it, I've probably read like maybe three books, but I don't think I've finished all of those. I've been a really slow reader lately. I wanted to tell you what I'm reading right now. I'm actually rereading my favorite book series. I've read this series multiple times, but it's just like one of my favorites. So it's called The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I love these books because they're just kind of like a fairy tale twist. I'm very much a fictional reader. I love reading fiction and like things with magic and fairy tales and love. <laughs> like, that's definitely what I lean towards reading more often. Um, but I love the fantasy aspect. And so the Lunar Chronicles, um, like I said, it's like a fairy tale twist. So the first book is about Cinderella, but she's actually like a cyborg. The next book is about Red Riding Hood. The book after that is about Rapunzel. And then the other, the last book is about Snow White. It's so easy to tell that that's what each book is about based off like the front cover. But then while well, actually like reading the book like you totally forget that that's who they are um and so it's it's really cool because it's not like your typical cinderella story um it's very um it's kind of like star wars too uh but like very minimal star wars um it's really cool. I love it. Like I said, I've read it multiple times. It's not quite like, it's maybe not my reading level. Um, it's for like teens to young adults. Um, but I just love her writing style so much. And I've I've read a lot of other books from Marissa Meyer too. She has one that is about the Queen of Hearts um, and how she became the way she is. It's such a sweet but truly sad story because obviously in the end she becomes the Queen of Hearts and she like cuts off people's heads. But it's really, it's really sweet. It's like 
tragic, but I love it. Um, another series that she has is like Lightly, I think. I haven't finished it yet, but it's lightly based off of Grumple Stillskin and the girl that can spin gold. Um, so that's really cool. She has another series that is not quite, like not all of her books are off like fairy tale characters. Um, she has one that's about superheroes. Anyways, I really love her books. I suggest you read it. Um, yeah, so right now I'm on, I'm on Cinder. I'm just rereading the Lunar Chronicles and I'm really excited. I wanted to tell you guys about a new sewing pattern that I have coming this week. The sewing pattern is for a rain jacket that I actually made a long time ago, like over a year ago. I made it from a thrifted vintage tablecloth and it's it was the most gorgeous tablecloth I've literally ever seen. And then I used a little bit of a newer tablecloth also, but it's really pretty. It's also lined, which is awesome. Um, it's a really, really good pattern. I'm actually like really <laughs> surprised that I made it, especially at the time. I just ran out of time to actually finish the pattern. When I made the raincoat, it was fall, I was in school still, and I was gearing up for my last semester of school, which was <laughs> pretty busy. Um, and then right after that, I graduated, then I went to, uh, I worked all summer, then I got married, and then Christmas, and now we're here. <laughs> and I just haven't finished it because the instructions take a little more detailed it isn't I would say it's probably not the most beginner friendly pattern it's not the hardest I feel like it's probably intermediate um so yeah I just haven't taken the time to sit down and do the instructions yet I still haven't <laughs> but I plan to do that this week and next week um so that's coming soon I would like to do a 50% off sale on the pattern for probably three days. And I just wanted to give you that heads up. I am calling the pattern the Aurelia Jacket. Um, I think it should go live on April 15th. And then it should be 50% off for the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th. If you want to take advantage of that sale, purchase this pattern. Um, if you want to see more details about the jacket, um, it's featured in this video, um, so you can go check that out. Um, and yeah, I hope you like it if you go and take a look. Someday I would love to make a child version of the Aurelia jacket. I think that would be so cute. Um, and just such a good use of like an old vintage tablecloth. I actually, um, I would love to make a lot of my patterns in children's sizes. Like imagine like a mommy and me collection like some of the dresses and th some of the coats, uh, pants maybe. I would love to have that in like a children's pattern and collection. The only problem is I don't have any children. Um, and so I haven't, like I don't have anyone to test patterns on. I don't even have like children's clothing on hand that I can compare to to see like what's the standard. I have used um, a lot of children's clothing patterns before because I worked for a company that made children's clothing. So I've used a lot of the patterns, I've sewn a lot of the designs, um, but I've never made the patterns and 
pattern making takes a lot of tweaking um, and you have to have like a model to assess whether or not the pattern is made correctly and so for women's clothing I'm obviously a woman and so I just test it on myself um, but I have no children <laughs> to test patterns on maybe someday but um, even like my friends don't have kids that are quite old enough to test patterns on um so we haven't done it yet but i would love to do that someday maybe if there are any of you out there that have children between like two and eight um and you would love to test patterns i'd love to draft some up send them to you for free um and then you can test them um let me know if any of you would be interested in that comment down below or tag me, um, DM me, whatever. I would love to also do men's apparel someday. Uh, some of my patterns are gender neutral, so they could be used by men, but not very many of them are. I would love to do more men's apparel, but when I went to school and I studied pattern making, um, they didn't teach us any men's pattern making even though like there were one of the classes i took there was one guy that took the class and he just had to make like girls clothes or the teachers just had to like i don't know give him extra advice like he couldn't just like watch the class and know how to make or watch the lesson and know how to make clothes for himself, which is unfortunate. Um, I guess it kind of makes sense because, like, women's fashion is the majority. <laughs> like, that's what you see in fashion the most. Um, but it's such a useful skill, and I'm really bummed that they just didn't teach that at my school. So... I'm going to be learning it by myself. I do have a great pattern making book that will teach me a little bit, but I think a lot of it is just going to come from tri trial and error. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Um, I do have a husband now that I can test the patterns on. So um, I think I would just start with really basic things. I think I would love to make a pair of like comfy linen shorts for my husband. For the summertime, um, I made a really awesome jacket last year, uh, a year and a few months ago, um, for my brother, and I would love to make that a pattern. I think it turned out really, really good for my first, like, men's jacket pattern, but... <laughs> I don't know if I have the pattern pieces for it anymore. I'd have to search through my stash. But that would be awesome. Is a pattern like that. Someone once asked me if my cargo pants pattern was gender neutral. And I would say it's not. Um, but I would love to make one that is. Or at least for men. <laughs> Anyways. Let me know if you have any ideas for children's clothing patterns for men's clothing patterns, even for women's clothing patterns, even though I have an unlimited amount of inspiration stored up for women's clothing patterns. I'd love to hear what you guys would love to see. Um, so yeah, again, the Aurelia jacket pattern should be coming on the 15th of April. It'll be 50% off for three days. Um, Okay, I wanted to show you one last thing that I am working on. I maybe have shown this in a vlog before, but also I don't think I have. I'm making this really gorgeous swan sweater. It's so cute. Um, it's just a swan with a cute little bow on its neck. Unfortunately, so I, I blocked just the bodice when I finished it. And the yarn, the yarn from the bow bled, which is so sad. 
Um, it's not horrible, but it's not as good as it was before I blocked it. But obviously, like, you have to block knitting, and so it was necessary. I'm sad about it. I did wash the yarn until it bled, or until the water ran clear, but it still happened. Anyways, it's okay. It's still super cute, and from far away, you can't see it too much. So then... I did one sleeve, and it's awful. <laughs> it's so bad. I fricked it up really, really bad. So the start of the sleeve, it looks like a puff sleeve almost. Like I just I um, picked up way too many stitches, and then at the end towards the cuff, I made it way too skinny at the cuff. So it just looks ridiculous. So, um, with the other sleeve, I'm trying something different. I picked up probably like 20 stitches less, um, and so far it looks really good. And then I plan to, the way I'm decreasing is also different too. I decreased like a lot on this one. Obviously I had to. Um, I'm decreasing differently on this one, um, and then I'm not going to make the cuff quite as small. So I don't think it'll be such a drastic change as it was with this one. And then I'm thinking this one will obviously turn out a lot better, it already looks way better. Um, and then I will unravel this one and redo it. Um, which is just like what you have to do sometimes. And I'm okay with it. So, anyways, I'm working on that sweater. I think it's super duper cute. I think it's going to be perfect for springtime because it's cotton, um, which is nice. Um, I think I'll even just like love wearing it at home during the summertime. Um, who knows, but I think it would be great to wear in the evening during the summer too. I just, it's so cute and it's very springy, um, so I love it. Uh, but I think I'm going, so also the bodice is too wide. It's okay, it's just like an oversized sweater, but I wish it wasn't quite as wide. Um, I think it like, I don't know, it kind of had to be for the pattern, or for the color work, it kind of had to be pretty wide, um, but I think I'm going to make this sweater again, in a different yarn, with a different color work. So, the pink yarn was actually salvaged from a Croft and Barrow sweater that I thrifted, um, and I got this sweater, it's it's also thrifted. It's from Old Navy. I think it's just a men's sweater. But I've realized that I look really good in one of my colors. I'm definitely, I think I'm like a spring color palette, um, which is a warm color palette. And so I think this color will look really good on me. Um, anyways, I'm going to unravel this sweater to repurpose the yarn into that swan sweater again but I'm going to make the bodice smaller the sleeves will be perfect um, another thing the collar not the collar the neckline is too wide on the pink sweater and so um, I'm going to adjust that on this orange sweater also. And then I'm inspired by this photo. I love the shell, and I think I would like to put a shell, but on orange, like this, for summertime. And I know like sweaters aren't the best for summer, but I always end up wearing at least a sweatshirt during the summertime, like early in the morning or in the evenings, like there are times in the summer where it is chillier. And we're gonna be in Boston this summer, and Boston 
is chillier than other places that I've been um, during the summer. And so I think I will get a lot of use out of it. And even though it's a shell, I would totally wear it in spring, totally wear it in fall, I think. Probably winter too. Um, so yeah. And like cotton, cotton is a spring summer type of yarn. And so if I were to make any sweater out of cotton yarn, I would want it to be kind of a springy, summery sweater. Anyways, that's my plan for that. I'll be doing that soon. As soon as I finish the swan sweater, which I think will be pretty soon. I started the no sleep yesterday, uh, so I'm not very far along. I think I could finish it today. Day maybe. Um, and then I'm going on a really long weekend trip. It's like five day long weekend trip um, later in a few days. Um, and I think I'll be able to finish the sweater on that trip. Hopefully. I'm going to end the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, just little crafty hobby things that I'm doing. I'm a very crafty hobby person. It astonishes me when people are like, oh, I don't really have any hobbies. Like, I guess I read. I'm like, how do you not have any hobbies? Like, my whole life is hobbies. I don't have anything else that I do. So, anyways, if you're a crafty hobby person too, consider subscribing to my channel because I do a lot of DIY um, and I'm obsessed with just making things myself. So, hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Subscribe to my channel. Have a good week.